What drives me is this ability to be able to decide from one day to the next pretty much what I'd like to address scientifically and having that freedom. <laughs> My name's Julene Zirath and I'm a professor of physiology at both the Karolinska Institute and the University of Copenhagen. I divide my time between my research team at the Karolinska Institute and running the Center for Basic Metabolic Research at the University of Copenhagen. And so that means that I'm often uh, at, in Copenhagen and I'm often in Sweden. So we're in a suburb of Stockholm, Sweden, and this is an off-site day for our research team. And we're here today with postdocs, PhD students, junior faculty, that are working together with myself and my colleague Anna Kroak at the Karolinski Institute, and also some of the team members at the University of Copenhagen from the Center for Basic Metabolic Research. And we're talking about our science, we're talking about the research we're doing, we are talking a little bit about some of the processes that we're running, um, our procedures, we're team building, um, and we're enjoying the, the time to be together I wear a lot of hats. I am an educator, I am a professor, I am a cheerleader, I am the coach, I am uh, someone who can listen. I think that um, we're all on this great journey of life and the biggest thing you can have is family, friends, and extraordinary coworkers. And I think I have that in all of you. So thank you so much for this. You burn the cake down. Uh, you can start the whole house on fire with that. <laughs> wow. Monday I'm at the Karolinska and we have our lab meeting and our group team building. Tuesday and Wednesday I'm in Denmark and the rest of the week I'm back at the Karolinska Institute. Right now we're in my office at the Mashk Tower at the University of Copenhagen in the Faculty of Medicine. And this is also the Center for Basic Metabolic Research. The teams here are working on doing molecular analysis of, of different samples. They also do cell biology. And um, you know, this is how they accelerate their science. So I help them design the experiments, interpret the results, write the manuscripts, um, write the grants. Um, so my role is more of a supervisor, advisor, mentor. My main responsibility is as executive director of this center. And so um, together with my leadership team, we're setting the agenda for the center and helping to set the vision for the researchers here. Well, this is not unfamiliar to any other research environment. There's training, there's master's students, PhD students, postdoctoral candidates, uh, junior faculty, so it's a real academic environment and all of us are working in the area of metabolism, but mainly with a focus on diabetes and obesity uh, and, and genetics and genomics. When you're working in a center like this, one of the biggest challenges is to keep people looking somewhat in the same direction. Um, of course, you know, you want people to have their own uh, ideas and vision and plan and science, but we have to be aligned and we have to be committed to the idea of this center. When I went to the university, I was fascinated by the precision, the science, the physics, the biology, the physiology, and I got really hooked on that. So I think already when I was in my early 20s, I knew I wanted to have a career in science. I'm incredibly honored that the EASD has recognized me for the Claude Bernard Lecture. I mean, that is their highest um, honor, and the People who have received that award in the past, they're my heroes. You know, many of them are real great heroes. It's one of those moments of triumph that, you know, my colleagues, my peers, have um, bestowed this distinction on me. I mean, that's pretty huge. I think one of the most fascinating things to me is that there's so much more to learn about how our bodies are adapting to exercise or how they're maladapting in diseases like type 2 diabetes or obesity. I understood early that exercise could be a medicine for people who have diabetes. If you are regularly exercising, you can have increased insulin sensitivity and you may um, prevent 
the development of diabetes. Well, our team is really interested in insulin sensitivity and how insulin affects metabolism, how it does so in normal physiology, and how it doesn't work so well in people who have type 2 diabetes. Every day I get up, I'm excited about what I'm doing. I'm excited about the people I meet. Um, I'm curious about the science. Um, I just, I'm so lucky that I was able to find the thing that makes me burn. I like to maximize every single minute of my day. I really, um, I parallel process. I'm like a sprinter. I work really hard when I work and then I rest. Every day I make sure I have time for myself. I mean, I go to the gym or I, you know, I do something, I'll take a walk, but I, I go to the gym every day. And my other big relaxation is I like to fish. My grandmother was a fisherwoman. She fished and um, I've inherited that from her. I like to be in nature. I like to be outside. You can see that's really important for me to have a harmonic environment around me. So being outside, being physically active is a way for me to kind of meditate and uncouple and relax. I would like to be able to contribute to the scientific enterprise in a meaningful way. Um, I would like to do that not only through my science, but also through, you know, working with different organizations as well. Like, like I am here, uh, like I've done with the EASD, you know, trying to make the scientific experience a better, better experience for everybody who moves through it. Advice for students is um, follow things you're incredibly passionate about because there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. And if you're really excited about what you're doing, you'll get through any of the lows. So that would be one. I would say it's really important to get solid fundamental training in really good labs where you have access to different points of view so that you're challenged and that you learn to be able to defend your ideas with facts. And I, I think it's important to be persistent, you know, because it's a tough job. The chances of getting grants funded is low and you have to be persistent and you have to be able to articulate your ideas and you have to be able to continue to kind of put that forward. So, and, and, and be patient, you know, one should be patient. It takes a long time to be able to come from work in the lab to be able to come for treatments. And so I think all of those things together are advice I'd like to, you know, kind of share with junior colleagues going forward.